Hello again everybody, and we're on to the 2nd of June, and I'll give an overview from the liberation of Northwest Europe with D-Day provisionally fixed for the 5th of June. The air plan called for a 100% effort on the 1st and 2nd, restricted to 50% on the 3rd and 4th, so the maximum force could be ready for the assault. So this day, just like yesterday, the 1st is planned and executed as a normal day. Now some other happenings. On the 2nd of June, conditions were better, but the 8th Air Force had to use Pathfinder technique and did very little visual bombing. So formations would have just followed Pathfinder aircraft with radio navigation equipment and crews that were proficient in its use, and then bomb based on really just a distance and bearing from a transmitting site in England. And on this day, in the morning and again in the evening, the Supreme Commander, that would have been General Eisenhower, received the first warning that it might not be possible to launch Neptune, the landing and assault phase of the Overlord plan, on the 5th of June as planned, so things are still very much uncertain at this point. Now let's get into the 540s and have a look at the 2nd of June for 441 Squadron. There were no operational sorties again today, but a number of tests and practice flying flights were carried out, so same situation as the previous day for this squadron. 442 Squadron, 6 pilots up before 0400 hours for dawn readiness. At 10.30, Wing Commander Johnson called all pilots to the briefing room for a talk on bombing. A scramble saw four of our pilots airborne before full instruction given. They made a circuit, landed, were briefed, and away again on shipping reconnaissance, which was a quiet hour, nothing sighted. Squadron leader Russell led the squadron at 17.15 hours to Ypres, damaged barges in the canal, strafed trucks, and then back at 19.15, and after supper, just in time to see the movie Stormy Weather in the officer's mess. Rumors of a move tomorrow, total flying hours, 28 hours, 20 minutes, and we'll have a look at these specific sorties here in just a second. 443 Squadron for the second, weather clear and fresh, visibility good, ground personnel joined personnel of 6443 Echelon to listen to a short talk by the commander of the wing. All pilots attended a lecture at 10.30 hours in the briefing room on tactics for the coming invasion operations. Ops flying time, 21 hours, 10 minutes, non-ops time, 45 minutes. So I'm going to dig around in the Form 541s, plot these out, and come back with a good description. See you in a second. Now looking at the 541s, we have three missions to plot out. The first being the 442 Squadron, 1100 to 1205, a shipping recce. And this is after the scramble. That's not included here. That would have run something like Squadron Ops receiving a signal from probably 11 Group at this point at Uxbridge. The four aircraft would have immediately gotten airborne and then received clarification and vectors via radio, but in this case it was just false alarm RTB, but they got airborne immediately on this shipping recce. Now if we come in here and look, they just covered the coast from Le Havre up to Cherbourg. Just checking out the situation, I know that the Germans operated small patrol boats all along the coast and out of Le Havre specifically, in fact during the landings. A few sorted and then turned back very, very quickly. I think this is the unit where we see that account. So it's listed here as uneventful, no enemy aircraft opposition, nil flak. Now next mission, 1605 to 1815. This was 443 Squadron on their fighter sweep. So all the way out to Belgium. And the account here is weather clear, visibility good. 12 aircraft laid for a fighter sweep. One failed to take off and two returned due to minor unserviceabilities. No enemy aircraft encountered, nor was any flak. Several lorries were shut up on the roads, but actually very few targets available. One large road oil tanker and 11 MET, MET being mechanized enemy transports, just trucks, destroyed on a road. And we have a grid point called out, and I do have a plotted right here. We'll look at these as we go. One damaged south of Bruges, and then one large good train sighted in Bruges. All aircraft returned at 1815. So the first target that was called out was just trucks right here on this road. And this is the exact location. And at the time, this would have been on the outskirts of town, just north of Courtrai. The next target was a barge, and that's up here and just south of Bruges on one of the canals. Now, let me get rid of the overlay. And as luck would have it, you can see a typical barge right there, and World War II era barges would have been, well, pretty much what you see there. And then, of course, the one good train spotted in Bruges itself, and you see the rail stations in here, rail line running through there. And there was no mention of the train being attacked, it was just recorded. And I tried to find some imagery to see what this area and what the, especially the rail situation looked like. There's no overhead imagery available from the period that I could find for this exact location. 
Now this mission was listed as a fighter sweep and you can't really get too tied down with doctrine in this period. It's just a generic term and different units did it differently. But typically at this point in the war, I think especially with this unit, the aircraft would have crossed the coast anywhere from six to 10,000 feet above the light flak but below the heavy flak. The 144th at this time liked to go out on the deck and scan for enemy aircraft above them and then be down low enough, especially at this point in the war where enemy aircraft were more and more scarce, be able to also very easily be able to pick up and engage ground targets, as is the case right here. Now let me move on to the second mission. This was 1715 to 1915, carried out by 442 Squadron, and this mission went out at full squadron strength of 12 aircraft led by Squadron Leader Russell. 1715 to 1915 is listed as a ramrod mission, ramrod 960, and that generally means an air-to-ground mission with at least some sort of target in mind, although this does look an awful lot like just a generic fighter sweep, and like I said, you can't really get tied down with the descriptions and tied down to a specific doctrine. Everything is just fluid and constantly changing. So this was a sweep to Austin, Ypres, Paparingue, and the Dunkirk area. Strike scene on eight barges, Canal H-55, and more on that number later. Two barges damaged, Canal H-45-4, no enemy aircraft opposition, meager, accurate, light flag north of Menin. So we'll look at the area where the barges were hit first, and this took a while to kind of convince myself of a, a good place here. Because the location called out here, H-55, isn't really a good grid reference, and neither is H-45-4. And all I could really figure is that it only gave the easting. So we are in a Sector H, so if I go H-55, and then I just come down basically to a good-looking canal that was along the route, and that's where I'm assuming they were, and then the second one was H-45. That seems like a good reasonable location for those barges, and they are down here on these canals. And so H would have either been destroyed on this mission or more likely just observed to be destroyed. It was a little bit ambiguous in the description, but you can see the very, very well-developed canal system here in this part of Belgium, and then the second one up here on a, a smaller scale canal. And this was two barges damaged. Now, there was also meager, accurate light flak down here to the north of Menin. And I just have it plotted there in a generic location. So, at this point, like I said, I think earlier in the video during the introduction, it was pretty much business as usual when it came to air operations on the 1st and 2nd, with the focus of the day being out here in the Pas de Calais and the Belgium area, the cover location for the invasion. So that's it for the 2nd of June, and we're going to move on into the 3rd and start to get into some targets in here closer to Normandy. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.